In this video, we're going to talk about how to make an IKFK switch. And in order to understand how this works, first we have to learn a couple things about constraints. So I'm going to make a constraint between the two cubes, just a point constraint. I'm going to make sure that the main chain offset is turned on so that they can keep their separate locations. So I click add. Okay, so now if I move my first cube, my second cube falls. And that's what we expect. Now, this point constraint, when I made it, shows up as a node underneath its cube in the outline. And if we click on it, we can see these settings in the channel box. These are the values of the offset. So we know that it is offset of it in X, and it's exactly this much. We can add or change the offset in these other axes also. So now this is the offset, and if I move it, that's what happens. This last value here is whether the constraint is on or off. So one is fully constrained all the way on, and zero is the constraint off. Notice how it's returned to its original location. And if I move this cube, it's no longer controlling the other one. If I turn it back on, it, made, it takes its spot back, and now we can control the other one. Pretty cool. I'm going to turn it on and off using this last value. Okay, so that's the first thing that we should know, is that constraints can be turned on second thing that we should know, I'm going to duplicate this cube, bring it over here, bring these transformations. The second thing that we should know is that an object can be constrained by more than one object. So if I select my two outer cubes and then my inner cube, do a point constraint, it's now constrained by two different cubes. If I move this, it's going to stay halfway in between. If we take a look at the point constraint, we can see that we have number two and number three, and they're both fully on, so they both are exerting as much influence as they can, and so it's stuck halfway in between them. If I turn this one off, the cube is now fully controlled by the cube over here. I turn this one off, it goes back to its original spot because it's not being controlled by anything. If I turn this one on, it goes over to this cube. I can go 0.5 and 1 and notice how it's closer to the one that has full influence and further away from the one that has half influence. If I do 0.25, you can see it'll get a little closer to the one with the full influence, etc. etc. Okay, so that's the second thing we need to know that an object can be controlled by two different objects. All right, let's get rid of these. So let's go into the top view and build our arm. Here is my shoulder, elbow, and hand. And hit enter. And we may need this joint, shoulder, joint, elbow, joint, hand. Now, I, so this is the skeleton chain that will be skinned to my mesh. This is the master arm. I'm going to duplicate this twice. This one is going to be the IK shoulder, IK elbow, This joint chain is the FK shoulder, FK elbow, and the FK hand. All right, all three are in exactly the same spot because I duplicated the original. So first we need to set up our IK chain. So I'm gonna take these other two and hit Control H 
to hide them. So now all we're seeing is this one door chain, and it's my IK. So I'm going to break this IK hand just like a normal IK hand. Get my IK, making sure that it's a rotate blade. Add the handle. Create a control, snap it to the body. Now that my control is made, I do these transformations. And delete its history. Okay. And we're gonna do a port constraint. So let's test this. Okay, good. Let's rename this. You see, I can break. All right. I'm going to hide all of these with my command or er, control H. I'm going to shift H to show my FK joint chain. All right. Now we're going to break this one just like. A normal FK card. So I'm going to create my little circle. And I'm going to be a little bit lazy and not add my padding groups to orient my controls along with the joint. But you should do that because it's much better than this. I'm going to make these just a little bigger. Freeze the transformations, delete the history, and do my own. Oops, this is FK, not IK. Okay, so my shoulder control gets an orient constraint. Maintaining an offset because I was not oriented properly. I'm going to hit G to do the next one. And G to do the next one. Notice these constraints are not working. Okay. And gets parented to the elbow. Elbow gets parented to the shoulder. Alright. FK arm is. Let's hide these controls, show my, all of my joint chains, and let's get our switch happening. So the way that we are going to do the switch is by orient constraining the master joint chain to each of our other arm chains, and then switching influence between them. Let's do that. So let's select both of our shoulder joints and then our master shoulder joint and do an orient constraint. Let's do the same with the elbow. I'm going to hit G and same with our hands. I'm going to hit G. So let's look at these. Both our IK and our FK shoulder are controlling. All of our master joints right now. All right, so now that we have that, we need a control to use to switch between these. And there's a couple ways to do this, but I'm going to show you how to make a control with a custom attribute. So we're going to create just a circle. I'm going to snap it to my master hand joint. And we'll call this CC IKFK. Okay. I'm going to actually parent it underneath my hand joint so that it will follow along whenever it moves. And I'm also going to move it just a little bit out so it's not overlapping the joint so I don't confuse it with the other controls. So I'm going to use 
Such missions. I want to add a custom control so that I can use it to control which joy changes control in my master brain. So if I have my control selected, I'm going to go to edit, add attribute. Okay, and with this I can choose a couple of different types of attributes. So I want to make a slider that goes from zero to one. So I'm going to choose this float which is a number, so its minimum is zero, maximum is one, and it starts at zero. Okay, the name of this attribute is going to be IKFK, no, the north text, and you click OK. So notice that another attribute has showed up over here, and if I change its value, it only goes between zero and one. Very cool. Now, I need to connect this attribute to the orient constraints on my joints. And to do that, we have to do something that's called making a set driven key. And to find this in your menu, so to make sure that you're in the animation menu, it's under key, set driven key, set. And this window opens up. The thing that is controlling the change is the driver, and that is this control. So I'm going to say load driver. I have it selected. I click load driver. The thing that is being controlled is my orient constraint, because we're going to be changing these values in my orient constraint. So we're going to have to do this for each one. So I'm going to start with my shoulder, say load driven. Now it's loaded up here. And now we select which attribute is controlling which attribute. So the IKFK attribute is controlling these two attributes. Now I have to make sure that they're set at the starting point. So when IKFK is zero, which it is right now, then IK should be one and FK should be zero. I'm going to click key. Notice they turn red instead of key. I'm going to go back to my IK. When this is at 1, then the opposite should happen. So this should be 0, this should be 1. And now I hit another key. All right. So let's make sure that that's working. So right now it's 1, and this is 0, and this is 1 back to zero. And now this is one. It's working great. Now we're going to do our elbow. So I can load in my elbow. Double check. This is at zero, which means I can. So F K is zero. I can is one. Keep. Up to control. Change it to one. Grab our constraint, change this one, and this is zero. Say keep. Alright, that's the elbow. Now it's loaded in my hand. Right now, this is at one, so we're in FK. So IK is zero. Keep. Change this to zero. Alright, so that's all three. So we're going to close this window. And now I'm going to show all of my controls. The FK ones are the big ones, and the IK one is just the small ones. Okay. So we're at zero, which means we're in IK mode. So if I move, there we go. Alright, so as you can tell, my master joint chain is following the IK joint chain. If I switch it from 0 to 1, see how it changes between? Now we're at fully FK. So I can rotate my 
application tree in my app. And I can animate between these really easily, which is cool. Alright. And that is it.